the PlayStation Vita is a console that never really got a chance to shine. And even in the world of emulation, the 3DS got all the love. But there's this one emulation developer team pouring all of their love into this one emulator known as Vita 3K. I've covered Vita 3K a number of different times in this channel. The last time I made a video about Vita 3K was sometime last year. And even then, a lot can change within a year. Today, we're going to talk about Vita 3K and its various changes and to see how it performs today. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high tech Lola really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and to help the channel grow. Vita 3K is currently the only place. PlayStation Vita emulator in existence. It has a version for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. But be wary because there is no official version of Vita 3K on the Google Play Store. The only way to get Vita 3K on your Android device is to go to their website, but we're not going to talk about that. Instead, we're going to talk about it on the Steam Deck. You can either download it from their website directly or set it up through Emu Deck, and honestly, doing it through Emu Deck is probably the easiest way to do it. That said, there's still some additional setup that needs to be done after you get Vita 3K, whether it's through the website or through Emu Deck. Now, obviously, I would recommend doing Emu Deck. It's so easy, you don't really need a tutorial, but I do have a video guide on emulation. But anyways, regardless of whether or not you do it through Emu Deck or not, Vita 3K does require a bit of setup. For Vita 3K, you need to download the last PS Vita firmware, which is conveniently linked inside the emulator itself. Also linked are some official system fonts, which you will need to download and install. Once you download both of these files, you'll need to make a new user. Don't worry, it's just a local Vita user file. If you did it through Emu Deck, your controls should already be set perfectly. Of course, you'll still need to install the firmwares that you downloaded. You can do so by going to File, going to Install Firmware, and then select your .pup files that you downloaded. You'll need to do this for both the font and the actual firmware itself. The installation process shouldn't take that long, but it will still take some time. Once you do that, all of these system icons will populate and show their actual Vita icons. But now for the more complicated part the games. Unlike most emulators where you can just run games directly off of a ROM file, Vita 3K requires you to quote unquote install the game onto Vita 3K's NAND. And on top of that, in order to install these, you need either a work.bin file for the selected game, DLC, or update, or a ZRIF code. Either one of these is required to decrypt the game and successfully install it onto Vita 3K. Most dumps of Vita games come in the form of PKG files. PKG files tend to be encrypted and require one of two things, either a corresponding work.bin file or a corresponding ZRIF string. Do note that obtaining either of these when you don't own the game is considered piracy, but you'd be hard pressed to find any Vita games that are still on sale today. To install PKG files, you'll need to select the PKG file in question and select a corresponding main.bin. In this case, I have Gravity Rush. Title updates for a game can share the same work.bin file, but individual DLCs require their own work.bin file. Like for example, if I want to install the military costume pack, I would select the military PKG and select the work.bin that corresponds to it. And yes, you will have to do this for every single DLC. You can't do it all at once, it seems. And yes, sometimes Vita game dumps come in the form of VPK files, but those tend to be low quality dumps. So how do Vita games play today on Steam Deck? Well, let's first start with the one game that I know like the back of my hand. Muramasa Rebirth. Muramasa is a game that you've been able to play on the Steam Deck forever now. That is, if you're okay with the GameCube version. While there's nothing inherently wrong with the GameCube version, the Vita version is an updated re-release, including a more faithful translation as well as DLC characters. One of the reasons why they opted to port this game over to the Vita was because the Vita had an OLED display, and this game looks great on an OLED. That said, the Vita's resolution is low, lower than the Steam Decks even, so you will begin to see some of that pixelation. Yes, there are projects out there that seem to upscale all of the textures and effects of this game, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video. Previously, Vita 3K had this issue with every single Vanillaware game, where audio would just crackle. And truth be told, that was the single biggest annoyance I had. But they fixed this issue, and now every single Vanillaware game, they no longer have any cracking issues, which is great. But I think I've showcased Muramasa a number of different times on this channel. Let's try a different Vita game. Let's try Gravity Rush. It's one of the first 
first games to come out on the Vita, and you could definitely call it AAA. On original hardware, Gravity Rush ran at 30 FPS. And yes, that's what we get here. The game is famous for extensively making use of gyro. But little known fact, you can actually play the game without gyro. The main mechanic, you know, shifting gravity. While I think it works better with gyro, you can actually use the right thumbstick. That said, dodging does require use of the touchscreen. And I mean, you could use a trackpad, but we also do have a touchscreen. And this is one of those rare games where you need to use multi-touch. And out of the box, the Steam Deck doesn't do that. But there is a configuration you can do. First, you need to press the Steam button. Second, you need to go into controller settings. Press edit layout, and honestly right here, I'm also gonna change my right trackpad to mouse, as this lets me use touchscreen functionality. With my trackpad, of course. Just set right trackpad click to left mouse button. Then you'll need to go all the way down to action sets. Press that cogwheel, press always on command, and then go over to system, and then look for a setting called touchscreen native. This will make the Steam Deck's touchscreen functionality not act like a mouse, but rather as a true touchscreen. As for the PS Vita's rear trackpad, that's activated by using right mouse button, so you'll need to set something as right mouse button. Gravity Rush works pretty well on Steam Deck. The only thing that doesn't actually work is actual gyro functionality, and yes, while you could set the gyro to right stick or whatever, it's not the same. You would need something like Steam Deck Gyro DSU, and even then VD3K doesn't have support for that, not yet at least. And I know the last video I said Gravity Rush was unplayable without Gyro or the back trackpads, but it turns out I was wrong. It's been a couple of years since I've played this title. But there are plenty of games on the Vita that require use of both. And now finally, we're gonna try a game that I know did not work the last time I tried it. Killzone Mercenary. Much like the last time we tried Killzone Mercenary, the menus work fine and even the first mission debriefing works. But once it's time to actually play the game, well, the game just doesn't work. Much like the last time I showed Killzone Mercenaries, the game doesn't load up and even crashes afterwards. So yeah, Killzone Mercenary still doesn't work. So how is VD3K? Well, in my opinion, VD3K improved substantially, especially when they implemented Vulcan. Yes, more and more Vita titles are working on Vita 3K. And yes, most of the Vita's library is playable from start to finish. Which is great because it seems like everyone forgot about this console. Yes, Sony forgot about it first. The only reason the Vita was really relevant were the third parties that developed for it. And many of those developers made the switch to Nintendo's platform once that released. And now many of them are on PC. Heck, the highest rated Vita game is on PC now, you know, Persona 4 Golden, which is why I didn't show that game. Anyways, Vita 3K is doing great, and it runs even better than it did before, but there's still the question of game compatibility, and that requires some time, and you know, maybe donate to them if you can. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos, and if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page, links in the description.